There's a fish right there, guys. Oh, it's a big one. I think it's a big one, guys. All right. I gotta turn my drag down. We got one on, guys. It's a decent one, guys. Oh my goodness, he's pulling pretty good. What's happening, guys? It's your boy Dan right back at you again with another episode of 302 Fishing. Welcome back to the channel here. Well, the weather has been crazy, as I've been mentioning to you over the past few episodes. Up and down, wishy-washy, whatever you want to call it. Literally right here, that is a remnant of a front that came through yesterday. And it actually dropped three hours worth of snow showers here in Delaware. And it was quite cold yesterday. So I stayed in and I stayed warm. I did have a couple friends that I followed on Facebook yesterday that actually had a tiny bit of success. But they were freezing nonetheless while they were out there. So that's why I stayed in. But today, we're going to come out. We're going to try to get fish on the end of the line. Uh, this episode is dedicated to a subscriber uh, who watches my channel and as well follows me on Facebook. He asked me if I can come out here and fish with some of those hand-painted baits and I said absolutely I'll do that. I don't know about the water temperature right now. It might be just a tinge cold but we're going to do our best to be successful in getting fish on the end of the line. So Don K we're going to go ahead and get your lipless crankbaits out here to mail to me a few days back and we're going to start busting up this pond right here and see if we can try to get a big old bite going on. If it doesn't work out right here, we're going to drive a half an hour down the road. There's another pond that I can use that has, again, another great lipless crankbait bite. But I'm hoping that we can get it all done right here. So stick with me. Let me tie the bait on. Let's start casting around and hopefully we can get that giant tug on the end of the line. We've got all the lipless crankbaits that Don sent us here in the mail. Each one of these has their own different kind of shade on it. This is pretty much a knockoff of the Lure Raid Level Vibe. It's a Japanese lipless crankbait uh, that he got blanks for, and he put his creativity in with the color. He's also equipped them with very, very sharp Gamagatsu hooks. So once we set into these fish, they're not getting off. I love using Gamagatsu, you guys. I'm sure you hear me a million times, especially the red uh, extra wide uh, gap hooks that I like to use all the time when I'm using my plastics. But this one right here, it's got a green tinge to it. So I'm assuming this is going to resemble a small bass fry that's floating around in the water that they can chase after. Another bait that they like is bluegills. So you can see that the blue tinge is kind of resembling those bluegills that roll around here and chase each other uh, while the bass are standing around waiting for them to be swallowed up. <laughs> but what I think will probably get the strikes right now will be this one right here. If you notice, it's got a purple back on it because in this pond, as well as the one we may go down to later on, it has a shad population in it. And you'll see that tinge of shade in the backside of that gizzard shad uh, if we ever ha decide to have them possibly snag into any of these guys. So we've got the gizzard shad one tied on first we're going to cast around and see how long it takes to get some fish on the end of the line so let's get to it what we're going to do here is this i'm uh doing a steady retrieve right here that's going to be our first way we're going to try to catch the fish and if that doesn't work we're going to go ahead and come back around and do the yo-yo uh, motion but we're just going to try to see which way we'll trigger these fish Fish on, fish on. Oh, he had it, guys. He had it. Did you see that line take off to the left hand side? <laughs> it was a small one. I should have let that fish run a little bit more. I just got excited because I got a hit on the end of the line, but that was off of the yo yo motion right there. So let's uh, stick with that right now, see if we can try to get another uh, swipe at the bait. But that was real close, it was maybe 10 feet out in front of me. All right, we'll come back to this section right here. Let's go ahead and head down to that corner. But that gets me excited. At least they're willing to go ahead and hit up on a lipless. We're almost to daylight savings time. I think we got maybe, I think it's two and a half weeks. Two weeks, somewhere around that range. And then, uh. That's the hope that the uh, bass fishing will start picking up again. That spawn will start going. Because I want to get one of them giant mamas. Seven pounds, guys. That's my uh, personal best I'm looking for this year.
fish right there, guys. Oh, it's a big one. I think it's a big one, guys. All right. I gotta turn my drag down. We got one on, guys. It's a decent one, guys. Oh my goodness, he's pulling pretty good. He is pulling pretty good. I think we have a giant. What do we got here? He is moving around like crazy. That might be a catfish too, possibly. Man, that thing is a giant, guys. Whatever it is. I don't want to overwork it. What do we got going on here? That might be a catfish. He's down towards the bottom. He's spinning like a catfish. Whoa! <laughs> That's a big old catfish, guys. We got him in the belly, I think. That's why he's moving around weird. Look at this. A giant catfish, guys, off a lipless crankbait. He got on the side of the belly. It's a channel cat, too. Hopefully he doesn't come off. He's wrapped around, so he's not going anywhere. Oh, no, he just unwrapped himself. That's a big old catfish, guys, and we don't have a scale. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. <laughs> That's the first time catching a catfish on a lipless crankbait. Wow, look at the size of that catfish, guys. Wow. <laughs> look at the size of that catfish, guys. <laughs> on a lipless crankbait. That's easy. It feels like it's about eight or nine pounds, guys. Wowie wow. <laughs> there are some crazy fish that do. Oh my goodness gracious. He just came off, guys. <laughs> Quicker release. There's the lipless crankbait, and we're all slimed up. Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> I counted, he was on the land. All right, I gotta clean this thing up. That is by far the craziest lipless crankbait catch ever I ever caught, guys. <laughs> Look at all the slime and snot on this lipless crankbait. I had to cut a bunch of it off because uh, all you got is this junk all over it. But uh, Don, there you go, buddy. It catches giant catfish. <laughs> it counted, we had him in our hands. Let's get our lipless tied back on. It definitely does raise the adrenaline level in my body. Even if that's the only fish of the day, I am thoroughly excited at that big old bite. I told you, I don't care what's hitting as long as something's tugging on the end of the line. And that's a good way to wake you up. <laughs> this is where we have the swipe at right here in front of us. Hopefully we can have that happen again. There's a fish right there, guys. Fish on. All right, what do we got? Another catfish. What the heck, guys? Don, what kind of lure did you give me? <laughs> Another catfish. Are you serious? That's a mud right there. I have never caught two catfish in one episode on a lipless crankbait. But uh, definitely a weird bite going on. <laughs> a baby mud hitting a lipless crankbait. Let's get that fish on the way. And she's gone. But it's definitely the yo-yo motion that's uh, causing the reaction. So we're going to keep with it. Uh, we're stuck on the bottom here, guys. I think we're going to lose our first lipless. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But that would be the cue to go ahead and move along to another pond. But let's see if we get lucky here. Well, we lost our lipless crankbait here, so we're gonna go ahead and jump off of this pond and get onto this pond right here, try to get the bass bite going on. I've been on this pond multiple times here during the winter, and again, it's been dead as a doornail. So I'm hoping today will be a good day and these fish will wake up. Because again, we are getting closer and closer to spring. I think it's the 22nd of March, if I'm not mistaken, maybe, I might be wrong, I don't know, I've gotta look it up. Somewhere around in that range. There's a fish right there. Fish on. He struck it twice. Little one. What do we got here? Oh my goodness gracious. Look at the size of that sunfish, guys. What is up here? 
<laughs> Holy crap, that's a giant, giant sunfish. Wow, that is a big one. It's not big as the one pounder, but goodness gracious, guys, look at that thing. Are you kidding me? Look at the beautiful blue underneath the chin there. All right, we gotta get this thing unhooked here. But that thing literally blasted that bait. Let's see if we can get one more view of it before it jumps out of my hand. Look at that absolutely insane looking sunfish, guys. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wow. She's gone. This is an absolute bonkers episode that's going on right now. I'm not surprised that we caught that right over here because from that tree right there that's in the water all the way down to maybe about around here, there's nothing but bluegill beds. You can kind of see like a tan area right here. That's one of them right in front of you. But that was absolutely ridiculous, guys. I've been catching some crazy fish this year. Wow. But you know there's gotta be bass hanging around here if there's gonna be that sit right there. <laughs> But maybe today is making up for when I didn't catch a lot of fish on the last episode with uh, Josh when we were on that John boat. Because uh, I wasn't having a good day that day, even though we caught a couple fish in the first couple minutes when we got onto the water. But you always got to love it when things turn around. But all again on that yo yo motion. Just curious if this could be possibly early spring because we got buds popping up on these trees right here. I don't see anything on the uh, sycamores and oaks that are around here, but you never know. I did see some daffodils already popped up out of the ground. But Mother Nature, she does tend to fool us sometimes in this state. But let's head our way over here and uh, be hopeful that we get at least one bass on the end of the line. <laughs> Here we go, this is our last chance to get a bass on the end of the line. I talked to Ryan for a couple of seconds and uh, he's been having troubles getting bass uh, on this pond as well too. I think the waters are still just a little bit too cold for them because we should have had a, a strike by now. Right there, right in front of us guys right in front of us holy crap <laughs> he was right on the edge how about that <laughs> yeah. all right there you go about a pound and a half possibly two that thing just came right out from that uh drop off right in front of us he absolutely destroyed that lipless crankbait but let's get the, the pliers in there get that hook out and boom <laughs> All right, man. That took us uh, maybe three hours to get to that first bass right there. It's kind of got a little bit of a gut going on right now, but I'm happy that uh, we got a bass bite there on uh, Don's lipless crankbait, the one he hand painted. That was the gizzard shad one. But uh, let's get this gal on the way, and she's gone. I switched over to the blue. We're gonna spend a few more minutes here. My arms are about mush now. God knows how many casts I cast in a day today. Fish on, fish on. Right there, right in front of us. <laughs> Look guys, are you kidding me? A tiny, tiny little dink. <laughs> They're sitting right on that edge. Hopefully that one turns into a big old monster in its uh, later days. But, uh, off she goes. Fish on. There you go. Nice one too. Oh my God, it's a big one, guys. It's a big one. It's a big one. Get out of there. It's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. 
There you go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Two and a half, possibly three. Both of those fish right on the edge. Actually, all three of them are right on the edge. <laughs> all right, man, this is a great color lipless crankbait blue. As soon as I started throwing this bait, these fish were all over it. And I picked up the crank back again. I got off the yo-yo, but there she is. She's thick and stocky. <laughs> nice. All right, now I'm definitely happy. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, baby, go on. The other way, the other way, that way, that way. And she's gone. I think one thing that helped that bite right there is I switched over to this uh, combination right here. It's got a slower gear ratio. There's another fish hit right there. It's got a slower gear ratio. I think that one's eight one to one, I think that is. And this one's seven five to one. So just a tad little slowing of that retrieve is getting these fish on the end of the line, I think, in my own opinion. But I'm slow cranking it. Fish on, fish on, there you go, there's another one. All right, nice, what do we got here? What the heck is, what? Oh my goodness gracious, what the hell? Wow! <laughs> A freaking gizzard shad, guys. <laughs> this is an absolute ridiculous episode. Wowie wow. <laughs> I would have never thought this would have happened in a million years. But you saw the previous bait that we had on air. And remember I told you about the purplish hues, if I can keep a hold of this guy. See the purple hues that are right along the top of that? That's why that bait is so perfectly matched for this pond and the other one we were fishing on earlier. But uh, we gotta get this guy back in the water because these things stink. Let's get that fish out there. Come on, baby. Spin around. And she's gone. I think that sun just warmed them bass up just enough to go ahead and start reacting against these uh, lipless crankbaits because it was very, very slow when I started off in the morning. I think it was about 10, 30, 11 when I got started. And it's about maybe almost four o'clock right now. Fish on. There you go. Nice. Boy, that blue one is tearing them up. <laughs> they are just slaughtering this bait. But they're hitting them right there again. Same thing, close to the shoreline as soon as it comes in. All right, my arms are jelly. And uh, I really had serious doubts starting off this episode thinking that we're going to possibly not get anything on the end of the line using the lipless crankbaits. Uh, I sat in my bed and deliberated as to whether I wanted to do that or not. And good thing I decided to change my mind because, Don, thank you. I think we created an absolute banger of an episode with your hand-painted lipless crankbaits. We had the baby bass. I got a couple swipes on it. However, the two stars were the gizzard shad color and of course that blue colored lipless crankbait. All of them were the same style, but I was absolutely amazed at that almost eight to nine pound catfish swipe it up on this thing, man. That was absolutely insane. We actually caught two catfish in a day. But then we headed out to the pond that I told you we're gonna go down the street from if we couldn't get the bass bite going on. And lo and behold, when we slipped that blue one on, that's when the bass were just absolutely agitated and excited. And we got some great looking bass on the end of the line up to about maybe three pounds, I would say, I'll give it. But that crazy one off of the, uh, the gizzard shad one was that sunfish, man. That thing was gigantic. Again, it wasn't as big as the pounder that we caught, but it was just close enough, man, that I could have weighed that thing and, and probably had maybe, I don't know, 13, 14 ounce uh, sunfish on the end of the line. It was absolutely huge. It's bigger than my hand. But uh, Don, thank you very much, man. I appreciate you, man. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you did, give me some thumbs up over there. I'd hope you subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, that way I'm informed of all of our future episodes. Drop a comment below, and uh, 
I hope to see you guys next weekend.